ExxonMobil reporting its third quarter results last hour with adjusted profit coming in 10 cents below what the street was expecting. $2.27 a share was that number. Joining us right now to break it all down is Chairman and CEO Darren Woods. And Darren, welcome. Good to have you here today. Good to be with you, Becky. Good morning. Oh. Let's talk about what's been happening uh, with the broader environment. Your, your numbers were down from uh, what the street was expecting, down year over year, but up quarter over quarter. Part of that, you say, is because of higher crude prices in the third quarter and industry refining my margin environment. So what's happening? What are you seeing right now? Well, it's one, you know, it goes back to what we've been talking about over the last year, the pandemic and the impact that it's had on the supply uh, supply continues to remain fairly tight, and so you're going to see margins and prices move pretty uh, dramatically with changes in demand. So as demand settles down, we see the margins and prices come off. If demand uh, spikes back up again or begins to rise, there's not a whole lot of uh, additional capacity response, so we're going to see margins and prices move. And I, my expectation is we're going to kind of continue to see that level of ups and downs as we move forward until uh, additional capacity comes onto the marketplaces, which is still uh, a couple of years out. The demand picture, we got U.S. GDP yesterday much stronger than a lot of people had anticipated, 4.9 percent. That's just the U.S., though. What, what are you seeing in terms of demand around the globe? Well, I think uh, Europe has got its challenges, particularly with uh, their energy supply and, and the impact that that's had on their competitiveness. So we've seen the economic growth in, in uh, Europe basically uh, come to a halt. And then China, I think, has slowly been coming out of uh, its challenges that were, you know, coming out of the pandemic and the lockdowns. We see that's still, I would say, tepid growth there, but uh, some signs of improvement. And then, of course, uh, the U.S. is looking fairly solid. In terms of headwinds that you guys faced during the quarter, you listed a couple of things. One was weaker chemical margins. The other, though, was an unfavorable derivative mark-to-market impacts and trading timing effects. What are those? What, what derivatives do you have? So we, we see this when we're trading in a uh, market with rapidly rising crude prices. We often see um, the the earnings and, and the booking of our earnings kind of manifest themselves with time while the cash... Uh, shows up with the activity in the quarter, and we certainly saw this this year, uh, this quarter, very similar to what we saw in the first quarter of last year. The earnings kind of manifest themselves and unwind with time, but the important thing is the cash comes uh, in the quarter with the activity, and we certainly saw that in this quarter. One of the reasons why we beat uh, consensus on our cash by about a billion dollars is is the uh, activities that we had in trading and and frankly the performance of the overall business. Yeah, operating cash flow was $16 billion. That was up by about $3.4 billion and about a billion dollars more than the street was expecting. What else is happening in those numbers? I think it's just the underlying performance of the business. You know, we've been growing our performance products. Uh, refining uh, facilities ran very, very well with reliability. We're bringing on new projects, and they are uh, operating extremely well. You know, we brought on a, the largest refinery expansion in the U.S. over the last decade, and that facility came in on time, on budget, and has been running very, very well. And so as we move through the quarter and our projects organization delivers some very significant projects, uh, those begin to impact the bottom line. So we're going to continue to see that. We've, as you know, we've we've got a pretty good portfolio of, of projects and opportunities across all of our businesses, and our projects organization has been delivering those pretty consistently uh, ahead of schedule and below budget and then operating very, very well. And I just add that that projects organization, which we put together in 2019, is actually a extremely critical enabler to what we're trying to do in our low carbon solutions business. If you look at the challenges of starting a brand new value chain, a brand new industry of carbon reduction, piecing together the pieces of that value chain uh, from end to end and building the capacity to handle the scale of emissions that uh, the world needs to reduce, that project organization is a critical enabler and a big differentiator for us versus uh, basically any other player that's in that market right now. Darren, let me ask you one more broad question just about what's happening in the Middle East. We had Roger Altman on with us uh, just a little bit ago, and he was saying that we're watching the Middle East minute by minute. It could erupt into a broader war there. How do you prepare for that at the board level, at the, in the CEO position, in terms of what you can and can't prepare for that, especially when it comes to oil? 
Well, I, I would say, uh, obviously, what's happening now in the Middle East is, is, is tragic. And frankly, it goes well beyond our industry. Hasn't had a specific impact to date, uh, and, and we're keeping a close eye on it. But I would tell you, more broadly for our company, we recognize we've got these geopolitical uh, impacts on our business. And one of our strategies, longstanding strategies, to make sure we've got a fairly diversified uh, portfolio of, of supply and projects and facilities around the world so that we can try to mitigate through diversification the impact of any one particular area on our company. Obviously, that, that area is pretty critical to the industry as a whole, and therefore it would have some more significant implications for the global markets if that was to expand. But as a company, our strategies have been to try to stay uh, fairly diversified, and that has been, uh, that has uh, helped us through a lot of uh, challenges in the past and our expectations that will continue to be a really important uh, risk mitigation um, uh, mechanism. Have you had to shut down any projects or move any employees today? No, we're, we've got uh, some businesses in that area, but none specific uh, or close to what's currently happening there. Those facilities we're, we're watching very closely. We've got, uh, you know, raised security protocols in, where it's appropriate, uh, managing our employees' uh, travel. And so basically keeping a close eye on that and making sure that we're keeping our employees and our operations safe, but no direct impacts as of now.